Hey guys, it's Kevin. I'm in the wood shop today. Today we're kind of working on a unique project, uh, unique to us anyway. This is not new, but it's something that's new to us. Uh, we're doing actually a little epoxy table today uh, where we are using wood and epoxy. But what we started here uh, is I've got a couple slabs that I'm going to be using that I have flattened uh, and I've got them pretty much cut to rough size. I've left them a little bit long, a little bit wide so I can trim this up after we get all the epoxy poured. But you can kind of get an idea how this is going to look. I'm going to fill this area with epoxy. I basically built like a dam because I'm going to dam up the ends here. And I also have put this tape, which is just basically a, a house wrap tape that's very slick. I've seen others use this tape, so I trust it. I'm guessing by just the feel of this, you might be able to get away with packing tape, but I would try that on a smaller pour before you invest in a lot of epoxy. It's a simple form made of half inch uh, plywood or MDF. I've nailed this thing together, so it's pretty sturdy, but it's also not so sturdy I can't knock it apart after the epoxy is cured. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my panels, my boards in this form. You notice it's pretty snug. And I'm actually going to clamp these down. You'll see why here in a second. So I'm going to flip this over. And I'm just going to add a few screws just to kind of hold that in place. Okay, so now we have our, our wood secured to our form. Uh, everything's taped up. And uh, why I screw those down is I'm trying to eliminate those boards moving around once the epoxy gets in there. The epoxy might creep underneath those boards, but that's fine. We're going to clean up both sides of this after the fact anyway. But that just tries to keep some of that from flowing out underneath. The other thing is you're going to have to consider is how much epoxy, or at least get an idea of how much epoxy you're going to need. What I'm doing is basically looking at kind of some of these areas and drawing a box over it so I can get an estimate, overestimating the amount of epoxy I need. But I just kind of break this into the rectangles as I move down. And that gives me a pretty good idea of how much epoxy I'm going to need. I would rather have more epoxy than I need than less epoxy than I need. You don't want to be in the middle of a pour and have to go back and mix up more epoxy. Okay, so having a little extra is probably just fine. Um, I'm right at, un underneath three liters um, for this. And so I'm going to probably mix up a full three liters of epoxy. It also makes the math a little more simple too, because what I'm using is this eco epoxy. It's a two to one ratio, so I'm gonna use a one liter of my hardener, part B, and two parts of the uh, part A. So I'll have a two, two liters and one liter, and we'll mix this up. Now I'm also using some tents. So I'm gonna use this blue tent, and to give it a little extra shimmer, I'm gonna use that pearl. Uh, I'm gonna mix in a little bit of these until I, I kinda get to a ratio that, that looks good. From what I understand, a lot goes a long way. And if you end up not using colorant, bubbles are gonna be very much more apparent. Please read the instructions on the epoxies that you get. They do vary, but this particular epoxy suggests mixing for at least two minutes. I would mix even a little bit longer if you're doing a big batch like this, just to make sure that the hardener and the resin have incorporated with each other. Otherwise, you could be looking at issues of some of this never ever setting up or portions of it never setting up and staying soft. So what I'm doing right now before I even add my colorant is I'm, I'm really getting a good mix on here. The other thing they suggest too is that uh, after the epoxy is mixed you'll notice that there are air bubbles in here and what will happen is those air bubbles will continually rise to the surface and you want them to. You want them to come up and pop what we'll do is we'll actually add a little heat to this so we can try to get some of those bubbles to rise out of the epoxy. So I'm going to start with, oh, I'm guessing about a half a teaspoon of that blue. And we're going to see how far that goes. I'm going to add a touch more, a touch more blue. What I've done is I've transferred about a liter into a smaller container and what I'm doing here is I, I wanted to have a, a separate mixing uh, pot for that 
What I could have done is just basically done this before I'd added the colorant. I'm just trying something new. This time I'm going to add this pearl to this blue. I just want to don't pour them all in at one time. If I mix them all together, it just becomes one muted color. I want to get some color variation, so that's why I'm doing that. The other thing I, I didn't mention, and I, I will mention this, especially if you get very porous, uh, a lot of inclusions, a lot of holes, like you're trying to fill knot holes. If you get a lot of that on the edge of your natural slab, a lot of times what happens is that epoxy will then seep into those holes and it'll at some point start creating air bubbles later down the road, possibly after you've already gone to sleep and those things will happen in the middle of the night. So if you do get a, a piece of natural edge with a lot of open holes, a lot of inclusions, what I do to try to mitigate that is I sometimes will coat those edges with just a thin layer of epoxy. I'm basically kind of sealing that edge, okay? And that's something you have to do the night before, obviously, so it has time to dry. Guys, one of the things I neglected to mention is that if you'll kind of notice how my epoxy is flowing from one end to the other, is that you need to make sure your epoxy table is pretty, pretty close to being level. As you can see, mine is not quite level. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shim up this in a little bit, see if I can get this to even out, flow back, back the other way. One of the things you need to plan for too is that you're this epoxy will undoubtedly creep underneath these slabs. It'll, it'll go below this, so you have to accommodate for that. Plan accordingly for the final thickness of your top. I have no doubt that I'm going to have to come back in here and probably take off you know, a sixteenth or an eighth inch maybe even uh, to, to flatten this out again. So just plan accordingly for that. Um, as you can see, I've kind of, I've kind of filled it up. Um, I don't want it running over the edges too terribly. I'm just kind of using this other epoxy that I had kind of put the pearlescence in and I'm kind of pouring that in there to kind of give it just a little bit of a color variation. And then what I'm doing is I'm kind of coming back through with my dowel. And obviously you can go too far with this. But I'm just trying to create some swirls and some movement with that pearl inside that blue. And you're kind of going to go until you get to a point where it's okay. Looks pretty cool, and I'm going I'm to stop now. So after we've uh, got our epoxy poured, one of the things that you'll start to notice is, well, air bubbles. Okay, you're still going to get air bubbles even if you're trying to seal those edges. It's just the natural thing. We've stirred this product, so there is going to be air bubbles. A quick way of getting rid of these, almost all of them, uh, and staying on top of it is just using a little torch. Okay, I've just got a little burns o here. Uh, you can use a, a bigger torch if you do plumbing at home, one of these will work too. I'm just kind of lightly waving this over the bubbles and you just see them kind of, just kind of disappear. Uh, once you get all the ones off the top, all the ones close to the top, doesn't mean you're done. So you might come back in an hour and see that some more have appeared. So we're back on the epoxy fill table and um, so next up, we've let this sit for, actually I let this sit for about a week. Um, with extra thick pours, I just gave it a little extra time. I had the time to do that. Uh, the packaging with the Ecopoxy says about 72 hours. Um, and, it, and then after about 72 hours, it was pretty hard, but I figured, you know what, let's wait a week, and then we know it's cured. So at this point, it's a moment of truth. You can kind of see my epoxy has settled a bit underneath the slabs more than likely. So we're gonna see how fun this is to tear this off. I have removed the screws that we screwed into the backside of this. 
So next up, basically, I'm just going to kind of gently or not so gently re try to remove the form. Grabbing my cat paws, you know, because they're a lot thinner. Okay, so there you go. You guys can kind of see that obviously we had some epoxy leak out on the bottom side. Um, you know, I honestly, another way to prevent that um, is to add a bead of silicone uh, along the bottom edge of these boards. That would keep that epoxy from going too far. So at this point, I'm going to get this into my sled and we're going to do a little flattening, remove some material, and get this surface flush. Now I've got, um, I've got my slab secured inside my, my, sl my sled here that basically this is how I flatten slabs. Pretty simple. You got two rails, a piece of plywood down below. The key thing with this is that these stay parallel with one another as far as a level across the top of these. And then I just have a carriage that my router rides in and this rides along those rails. I've set up some stops on either end of my sled here so I won't route into the side of my carriage and I'm just going to basically take small very small bites of this I've got about an eighth of an inch or so to remove I'm not going to try to take that all off at one time so I'm just going to have to drop down maybe about a sixteenth of an inch I'm going to work my way back and forth down the slab and then repeat that process mm -hmm.